Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Savannah. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. We'll give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we're going to be talking about that damn Ben Simmons. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, for the people that are new to the channel, you may not know how I feel about Ben Simmons. Those have been, that have been here for quite some time, they know. But for the new people, let me just tell you guys where I stand with Ben Simmons. I think Ben Simmons is one of the biggest time wasters we have going in the NBA today. And I don't even think it's up for uh, it's, uh, it's up for even debate. No one has wasted people's time more than one Ben Simmons. Let's just let's just let's just go back to the beginning. Prior to Ben Simmons uh uh, uh coming into the NBA, he was being compared to LeBron James. People were saying that Ben Simmons could potentially be the next LeBron James. Why were they saying this? Because Ben Simmons was a 6 foot 10 point forward that could run a break he was very fast uh he was quick he was strong he had impeccable court vision and to be fair he was a better defender than lebron james not the score but given all of his physical attributes coupled with his basketball iq a lot of people felt that ben simmons was you know going to be on his way to becoming you know probably a hall of famer certainly a multiple time all-star going into the future his first season in the nba as a rookie rookie in 2017 his stat line was the following 15.8 points although yeah 15.8 points uh on 54.5 percent shooting from the field with 56 percent shooting from the free throw line um and i think he was getting you what eight rebounds and eight assists per game with 1.7 steals the next season he followed that up with 16.9 so you saw an improvement on 56 percent shooting from the field you saw an improvement there as well he shot zero percent from the three 60 percent from the free throw line you saw an improvement there as well and he got you 8.8 rebounds which is an improvement 7.7 assists which is virtually more or less the same as a year prior uh and 1.4 steals per game his third season in philly ben simmons was now scoring 16 a game on 58% shooting from the field. So his field goal shooting percentage had increased every single year he was in the NBA. He was shooting 28% from the three. So to go from zero to 28.6, that's an improvement. I think the vast majority of us would agree with that. His free throw shooting percentage went to 62. And it was rebounds was about eight rebounds a game and eight assists per game. So Ben Simmons was basically a 16, uh, eight and eight guy, right? And that year, he that was his career high in steals per game. And what these statistics don't capture is obviously uh, his defensive contributions to a to to to, uh, to a team, right? But then after that, we started. He Ben Simmons started to go on a decline, right? Started to go on a decline. And that following season, his scoring went down. His field goal shooting percentage went down. His three point shooting was the same, but it was is a negligible difference, twenty eight point six to thirty percent. Free throw shooting, 61%. But his rebounds went down and assists went down uh, and his steals went down. Uh, and that was his final year in Philly. They get to the playoffs and we all know what Ben Simmons did. Passed open a wide open dunk layup. Passed it to a teammate who basically got mugged on his way to the rim. And everybody thought that that was basically the back-breaking game. That just pretty much sealed the fate for the Philadelphia 76ers. And then Doc Rivers came out and made the infamous comments. He doesn't know if he can be the future going to the, the point guard going into the future. And then Joel Embiid said what he said. And then ever since then, that's when things went downhill for, in Philly. And then Ben Simmons took it upon himself to show the world just how big of a baby he can be. And he basically staged a mutiny. He refused to go to work, show up to work, and he said he wanted out. There were even reports of his teammates flying to California to go basically uh, 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 coax him to returning. He told him, I don't know why you guys wasted your money coming all the way out here. Just please about face and go all the way back. Y'all, I'm not changing my mind. And it got into this thing with, with Doc Rivers and Rich Paul where he was like, he needs to uh, honor his contract and all of these different things, right? Then what happens with this Ben Simmons? He goes to Brooklyn. Somehow he got traded, even though they later on found out he got an injury. He had an injury. I don't know. He passed that physical examination. He gets to Brooklyn, right? This Joker gets to Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Nets, who I think were going to the playoffs in the midst of the playoffs, we start hearing that Ben Simmons could come back. He could come back. There were even videos of him talking I mean, after practicing. I can come. I come back. Then 
out of nowhere, the Brooklyn Nets go down 0-3. He's like, Ben Simmons has a back injury. We cannot see, we won't be seeing him anymore. That year in Brooklyn, he averaged, get this, a whopping 6.9 points per game on 56% shooting with 0% shooting from the three. 43.9% shooting from the free throw line with 6.3 rebounds and 6.1 assists and 1.3 steals. At that point, people started coming out and calling out Ben Simmons. And one of those people was Shaquille O'Neal. He was tough on Ben Simmons. But what happened recently, he did a sit down, I believe, with his son on a show by Complex called Goat Talk. And they were talking about various players. But then it got to the point where they were discussing ben simmons and when it came time for shaq to give his thoughts on ben simmons he absolutely molly whopped this dude uh, uh with his comments so these are the comments that we want to get into we're going to be reading from a yahoo sports article so let's 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 read what shaq had to say here so the article starts off with the headline saying shaq calls nets ben simmons a bum for not playing in more games brooklyn Nets guard ben simmons has been uh, has had quite a bout of bad uh, injury luck over the past few years to the point that him being on the floor is considered a, a point of progress for his career. While Simmons had been paid like a star player for the past few seasons, there are some who dislike that fact. In an interview with Miles O'Neill of Complex, NBA legend basketball Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal was quick, uh, uh, was asked to pick the worst NBA player of all time. While the former LSU Tiger went to nominate Minnesota Timberwolves center Rudy Gobert for the award, he also picked someone that was also went to his alma mater. Ben Simmons is another bum. If you sign a contract for $250 million, show me $250, O'Neal said while explaining why he picked Simmons for the distinction. Since uh, signing his five-year $177 million contract extension in July of 2019 with the Philadelphia 76ers. Simmons has made over $145 million on the court, but has played in just 175 games in five seasons. There is a reason why I walk funny, O'Neal said. When, why I can't turn my neck, why I can't do it, because I played uh, for my 120. So you guys, so you got guys like him that you know, screw the system. This isn't the first time that Simmons has been criticized by O'Neal for not playing in more games and certainly isn't the, uh, the first time that Simmons has been called out by a big media personality. That's what Shaq had to say. He went far, but I don't think he went far enough. So I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit further. The, the season that I outlined, which was Ben Simmons's first season, with the Brooklyn Nets, some people attributed that to injury. Then what happened? They were like, okay, Ben Simmons is going to, you know, get himself right, come back the next season, and he's going to show the whole world what he got. The following season, which is the 2023-2024 season, he played just 15 games. But in those 15 games, Ben Simmons was scoring a whopping 6.1 points per game. His scoring went down. His field goal shooting percentage went to 58. Some of you guys were like, well, this, this is a fantastic improvement. Well, here's the kicker in all of this. Ben Simmons in his rookie season was averaging 12.3 attempts, field goal attempts per game. Last season, Ben Simmons was averaging 4.9. Less than five shots a game. And he was making 2.9. So obviously, you're going to shoot a high percentage when you're very selective with the shots that you take. Once again, he shot 0% from the three-point line and get this he was only attempting one free throw attempt per game and he made 40 percent of his free throws i want to give you guys a statistic here you guys understand that we are currently in the nba that is now hyper focused on three-point shooting essentially if you even want to be on a basketball floor you need to be able to space the floor this goes for guards all the way up to stretch fours and centers in some cases in the case of Ben Simmons, not only has he shot, get this, in the six years he's been in the NBA, I want you to get you guys to hear this properly. In the six years Ben Simmons has been a professional NBA player, in the six years, Ben Simmons has shot 0%. Hear this well. 0% from the three-point line in four of the six years he's been an NBA player. Four of the six years this guy has called, had the privilege of calling himself an NBA player, he shot 0% from the three. 
I want to give you guys another an, an, another thought. In the six years that Ben Simmons has been in the NBA, do you know how many three-point shots Ben Simmons has made in six years? Ben Simmons in six NBA seasons has made five three-point shots. I'll repeat that. In six NBA seasons, this guy has made five three-pointers. Now, there's some people that will say, well, you know, he doesn't really need to shoot. All he needs to do is push the floor. I mean, push the ball up the court, set up his teammates, set picks, roll to the basket, play at the dunker spot, blah, 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 blah. Like I said, these people are the only one that understand basketball. When you're on the floor and you cannot space the floor, you are, you are, you are a liability. On offense, teams are going to be playing against four. It's going to be five on four. Or defense, five on four. Because you know there's one guy you don't need to pay attention to because he's not going to shoot. Hell, he's not even looking at the basket to shoot. And some people have guessed that the reason he's afraid to shoot is because he's afraid to get fouled. Because Ben Simmons has some psychological block. We can say that, okay, Ben Simmons has suffered some injuries. Therefore, he, could, he hasn't been able to improve. Fine. What about his free throw shooting percentage? How hasn't he been able to improve his free throw shooting percentage? The last two seasons, he's shooting... 40 and 44% from the free throw. How do you attribute that to injuries? That's just a lack of repetition. You don't care. You don't care. But when it comes time to killing the gram, oh, Ben Simmons ain't nothing to play with. He like the goat of the gram. He can post his cars and all of that stuff. And he got the ladies buzzing. Oh, you seen what? You seen the new whip? You seen the crib? He can do that. But when it comes to actually focusing on basketball and improving, he has no interest in it. And all of his contemporaries have gone on to improve. And Ben Simmons is still the same old damn Ben Simmons. I rest my case.